Mass extinctions are probably a section that you are going to overlook when you are studying and trust me there is definitely going to be a question on this topic in the exam and it might even have the trickiest question in it. Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler and we are going to be covering mass extinctions. This is obviously a subtopic inside of the bigger topic which is the history of life on earth. I want to walk you through the various steps of mass extinctions, the different kinds and then we're going to look at a question um, and how it would look in the final based off of these kinds of infographs like I have on the screen now and then also some regular graphs that teachers love to include in their exams and if you are new here don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post Tuesdays and Thursdays and don't forget everybody if you want to make this learning super easy and you want mass extinctions to be one of the easier things that you study, then don't forget to get yourself a copy of the cheat sheet I do have available in Afrikaans and English for grade 10. So let's dive into mass extinctions. Now, as the name suggests, mass extinctions are when a species or a whole group of species die out. And we're actually going to divide that into two different kinds of extinctions. When we speak about extinctions, it can be a species that is going extinct. Or it can be a whole community it could be a whole ecosystem. Um, basically, mass extinctions require a certain percentage of individuals to go extinct in order to be considered mass, like enough is dying. Now, when it comes to studying this section, it's important to note when those mass extinctions occurred. We have the Ordovician, the Devonian, Permian, Triassic, and Cretaceous. Now you will need to most likely know the names of these specific mass extinctions but don't worry you don't need to remember all of these percentages off by heart because a lot of teachers will include something like this infograph that you can see in front of you and they'll ask you questions about the topic. Instead what you actually need to know is the name and what actually potentially caused that mass extinction. So in this particular one um, if we start with the Ordovician, we can see that it's proposed that it could have been an ice age. The Devonian was a drop in oxygen levels. The Permian, which was a huge mass extinction, one of the most important ones, as you can see here, 95% of organisms became extinct. It's the biggest um, mass extinction we have ever had. Actually, did you know that it was thought to be the turning point of evolution as well for a lot of organisms that were left behind? It was actually so bad life on Earth during the Permian mass extinction that it wasn't certain whether or not life would actually um, make it back, you know, like grow back to what it was before, considering that 95% of everything on Earth had died. Then we have the Triassic period, which was a combination of volcanic eruptions that were probably triggered by asteroids colliding with the Earth. And then the most famous one that I know that everybody knows about is the Cretaceous period, which is, of course, that asteroid impact that caused the dinosaurs to go extinct. Now, if you know the names of the periods as well as what caused the mass extinction, you should be pretty good to go. Um, you just need to double check with your teachers if there's anything else that you would need to know. But I don't think any teacher ever expects you to know like specific dates or times. As I said, they love to ask this as an infograph. Now, technically, we are actually considered in the uh, sixth mass extinction right now. And the possible cause is us, Homo sapiens. So this particular period of time is called that because we are losing so many species so very quickly. Now the video following this is going to be fossil formation, so don't forget to go check that out as well. Because what happens when all of these animals die at the same time? They become fossils. 
Now, what I want to also discuss is the causes of mass extinctions, because a lot of exams will probably ask this question, and you need to elaborate a little bit on them, on how they, these um, causes of mass extinctions actually affect life on Earth. So let's talk about climate. Climate, remember, is when we are talking about temperature, but we're also talking about um, other things like humidity. We are talking about... Um, wind, you know, um, not just weather, we're talking about long-term changes in the climate. Maybe it got colder, maybe it got hotter. Likewise, um, linked to that, if we look a little bit lower down here, would be air temperature. And often the air temperature goes together with climate, so I would actually put those two together as ones that match. Now the next um, cause of mass extinction is a meteorite impact. Now this has a lot of knock-on effects and so we often pair this together with a volcano erupting. Often the meteor, which is also called an asteroid just depending on how big it is and what's at its core, but they're a similar body of rock. Often what happens is the meteor hits the surface of the earth and it causes a eruption uh, under the surface of the Earth's crust, which causes volcanoes to erupt. So these two go together, but what actually comes out of volcanoes that makes them so dangerous is their volcanic ash. Now, volcanic ash is toxic, and it is also filled with hot gases and it actually is thick enough to block out the sunlight. So this volcanic ash can block sunlight. Because of those two things together, the blocking the sunlight and the toxicness of this ash, it can be shot up into the air when it erupts the volcano. It can, it can spread out into the atmosphere, blocking the sunlight out. And then it causes plants to stop photosynthesizing. Animals drink water that's filled with this ash that's toxic. And so slowly but surely, everything starts to die over time. Now, some of these other things can also be linked to volcanic eruptions and meteor impacts, including oceans becoming acidic and the water levels um, or the oxygen water levels changing. So these four can actually go really well together because one causes the next. Um, it's kind of like a knock-on effect. The next one I want to move on to is the rising sea level. Now, sea levels rise mostly because of ice melting. Now that is when the polar ice caps themselves, because remember those are fresh water, those big pieces of ice, they start melting and it causes the sea level to rise. Now why is that a mass extinction factor? Well, when water rises, it is going to destroy environments. Think about all the environments that are along the edge of a continent, you know, all those beaches, all those swamps, all those low-lying areas, they become flooded. So we've got to think of massive, massive floods. What also can sometimes happen is when the sea level rises, because there's more fresh water, because the ice is melted, it makes the sea less salty which I know doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's a huge deal considering that a lot of animals that live in the ocean, remember the ocean is two-thirds of the Earth's surface, they're very sensitive to how much salt is present. So that's a really big deal. Now, last but not least is the most unusual one, which is atmospheric circulation, which is referring to gases. Now, gases are... The main gases that make up our atmosphere, right, are carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, or carbon dioxide, should I say. Now, these gases, they are naturally occurring in varying amounts. The problem is when specifically carbon dioxide and methane gas, which is a form of a carbon gas, so methane has carbon inside of it, when those gases go up in number, they can change the temperature of the atmosphere. They actually make the atmosphere hotter, which links to this air temperature one. It can also link to the sea level um, cause of mass extinctions, because obviously if the gases are making the air hotter, it will cause ice melting. And if you ask me, well, how do the gases get there in the first place? Well, 
Interestingly enough, it can also be linked to volcanoes. Volcanoes can cause huge amounts of carbon dioxide and methane gas when they erupt along with their volcanic ash, and that can also change the surface um, temperature in the atmosphere. Now, to sum up everything we've done, I've actually included here a diagram that I think a lot of teachers would use in an exam, and they would base their questions on a graph like this. So let's run through what you're looking at and then what teachers will ask you. So first things first, we are looking at a graph of mass extinctions. We have millions of years before present time, and then we have the percentage of extinction. Basically, that means that our current year is over here, so year zero, where we are now. And if you go back in time, that would be all the way over here. So just keep in mind that we are moving towards the current time. Now what we have here is a line graph showing us various peaks and each of these peaks have been labeled for us really nicely so that we can actually see the mass extinctions. Now how will we um, read this and how will it be tested? So first things first, a lot of teachers would love to know if you can read off the dates or the percentages. So let's say a teacher says um, when did the Permian period occur during uh, according to the graph. You would then need to see, well, that's where the peak of the line is. So if I read and look down, it's going to be at 250 million years ago. And it's really important to use a unit of measurement. You can use MYA, which means millions of years ago. You can also just write it out in full. Another thing that they might also ask you is how many species went extinct, for example, or in the Ordovician period. What you need to do then is take your ruler and see how it goes across into the percentage. And this one is 30%, so you would write 30%. Other questions they would ask you here are things you would have to learn, right? As I mentioned earlier in the video, you would have to mention what was the cause of the Cretaceous um, mass extinction. What was the cause of the Permian extinction? These are things that you would have to be able to just know, right? You can't find this on a graph. Now, this is just one kind of graph. There are so many different kinds of graphs that they could give you. Now, this is a very short topic, so there isn't actually a lot of terminology, but I'm just going to go over the main points once again. If you want to use these as flashcards and you want to create these for your studying purposes. So we spoke about mass extinctions, which remember is when we have a loss of multiple species. And it can be whole communities, it can be whole populations, and even at the extreme, it can be whole ecosystems. As we saw, there are many different kinds of um, or steps of mass extinctions and so we will need to know remember the five main extinction periods which was the Cretaceous, Triassic, Permian, Devonian and Ordovician. Then we need to know the various ways in which things are triggered and what causes a mass extinction. So we looked at volcanic eruptions where we put volcanic ash in the air, it blocks out the sun, it's toxic, it can get into water. Linked to volcanic eruptions are asteroids or meteors. They're just different sized rocks. Um, and often they are confused with each other, but I think for the purpose of our lesson, we don't need to worry too much about their main differences. Just knowing that it's a really big rock that you know, knocks into the earth and it causes a trigger or a reaction after that. One of them being volcanic eruptions occur, tsunamis, putting dust in the air, blocking out sunlight. Another one that we looked at were sea levels. Remember sea levels rising um, can destroy environments by flooding them and a huge proportion of the earth, it's two thirds of the earth is covered in water. So if it's rising, it's going to cover more land and we're going to lose environments. Last but not least was climate change and climate change is both a cause and an effect in the sense that climate change can cause mass extinctions, but climate change is an effect of also things like, as I mentioned before, volcanic eruptions and asteroids where they can trigger climate change getting hotter or getting colder. It's not just about temperature, it can also be how wind can change. Maybe there's a lot of lightning and the lightning storms. All of these things are linked to climate. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. I will be posting more grade 10 videos, so keep your eyes peeled on the grade 10 playlist. The next video up after this would be fossils, how fossils are formed, and I will see you all again soon. Bye!